Hello and welcome to Racers Now. We are looking at day two of Glorious Goodwood on Wednesday, the 31st of July. Plenty of bets for SD. We've already covered day one on a separate video, so check that out if you have not done already. And as we've already, as we're going to be shouting all week, SD smashed in a 33 to 1 winner of the King George just last Saturday. He is absolutely flying. How are you, SD? I'm good. It's like David versus Goliath with me and you, isn't it? Uh, there's a slight disparity. There's a slight disparity in slight the disparity. in the tipping. Yes, um, I would say it's going rather well for you at the moment. So well done. Right, this first race on the Wednesday, I'm having a bet. Um, as we've already reported, the sun is shining, uh, the weather is hot, and the ground is drying out quickly. Um, the... Just just on that, before you go on to that, um, there is an uncertain weather forecast, and they may well not hit. But there is a there is a chance that you could get some. Fairly hefty thunderstorms Wednesday or Thursday. Just worth bearing in mind if you're two days out. I it gives Ed Arkell a bit of a headache in terms of in terms of irrigating on Tuesday night. I would say don't do it, Ed. Don't be a clown. Horses can win on firm ground, you know. But it it it's another imponderable. Yep, fair enough. Right, uh, the first race on Wednesday is a one mile four furlong handicap, and I like one in this, and it is French Duke win only. Um, 11 to 2 is available. I just thought this horse, um, if you watch it back at Ascot, was just bumper cars, just ran a good race, got uh, got bumped early, got bumped late, was drawn pretty wide on one of those round, round course um, handicaps. Um, Although it does create a little bit of um, a bit of uh, debate over whether you need to be drawn, uh, whether a wide draw is good or not at them um, at those round course. Um, One to uh, wide draw. Uh, so. um, anyway, I thought that um, he just basically finished full of running. I think he's been left on the same mark. Eighty-eight headgear goes on. I think he's got a right chance to win the opener on Wednesday. Keep making me case. I'm getting a drink. Well, uh, it was only going to be a quick case, SD, because that is my only bet on Wednesday at Goodwood. But as SD goes to get a drink, we will swiftly move on to the 225. This is the Oak Tree Stakes on Wednesday, a group three for the Phillies and Mere. Mere's over seven furlongs. Um, this I hate these types of races. There's no bet in it for me, but there is some uh, quite familiar names, and SD does have a selection. Yeah, I'll just go back to French Duke. I saw it having a spin around Wolverhampton in the winter, and it was... Yeah, it was quite a uh, an eye-catching ride. Far be it from me to suggest that they were uh, they were looking for a mark, but uh, yeah, it was it was it went in my notebook anyway. I wouldn't put you off for that. I just thought it was an impossible race. But on to the oak tree. Remember, brief glimpse winning this back in nineteen ninety five. Oh yeah, basically. Um, and um, I thought, well. Surely this Kathmandu's got a chance for the for the Sangsters. Was uh, wasn't too far behind in the um, French Guineas. Apologies, I can't pronounce it. I know the hope the winner stunk at Royal Ascot, and then subsequently ran all right last time in in France. I thought I thought his his for her form. Apologies, her form before everyone starts was was probably at or above some of the, some of the others. I mean. I have to say, I didn't like the Falmouth form at all with this uh, this Porter Fortuna basically beat a, a field of rags. And as a result, this, this Javara, who is now drifting, is, is a fairly fairly short price favourite. Uh, three rounds have won the last couple of runnings of the race. And I thought of the three rounds, certainly Kathmandu was a, was a way to play the race. We'll just say Rakia, if, if Jim doesn't muck it up. Look like it would appreciate seven furlongs at your last time, but I, I, I'm happy enough at nine to two with Kathmandu. Yeah, I thought an interesting runner in there was this Fear Angelica that won a listed race for Richard Hughes in France last time, but did pretty much bomb out at Royal, at Royal Ascot before that. Not sure what to make of that. And like you say, Rakia, Rakia, you put up her up last time. Um, yeah, probably needs a step up in trip. So, yeah, tricky race. I thought that one no bet for me. On to the three o'clock. This is the Morecambe. This is the uh, another the two year old race of the day. There's pretty much one every day this week. Um, I was looking at that Asterius. I thought he won well at Sandown, but then then again, was it a crap race? There's quite a lot of runners in here as well. Much more runners than the Vintage, for example, on day one. I wasn't sure, Esty. Where did you land on the three o'clock? 
I thought this was some pillar of head of the first two days. Uh, yeah, I, I was happy enough to take a serious on at, at, at 11 o'clock. I, don't, I always think Archie Watson, have one beat her there today. Um, I laid it at 4 to 9 last night, went off at 11 to 10 on the machine. He does try his two year olds quite hard to peak early. So it's several improved passes. And this, it might be the same here. Now, I thought the bet of the week was um, you'd be doing just fine if you bat this, Mr. Lightside. Um, he's an absolute, absolute pocket rocket, this horse. He, he blazed at Nottingham last time. He blazed at Red Car the time before. He had Alistair Rawlinson on last time. No disrespect to him, wouldn't be the best jockey in the world. Oh, he was a he was a passenger. He was a passenger. He was merely a passenger. Paddy have gone five. The magic sign of ten. I think Paddy's probably got it right. I think I think this was very quick. Reminds me a bit of Big Ebbs in in terms of his speed, and and I think he'll run. I think he'll run very very well. He's got a bit under the radar, and I thought double figures was. Was certainly stretching where we where I'd want to lay him anyway. I wouldn't want to lay him. Uh, probably I wouldn't lay him at five. But there, there we are. Led every yard at um, Nottingham. You know, on it's these um... run. it's gonna it's gonna suit him, isn't it? I remember back in the winner of this race as a twelve year old in your lake back in nineteen ninety eight. I've seen it win at Hamilton. The one thing I would say, though, ST, is drawing him free, so he's going to be towards the inside. These two-year-old racers do tend to favour the near side rail. Anything, any angle in that? Well, they certainly do on soft ground. I mean, no, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I think his chance will be significantly blunted. If it pisses down, maybe they won't run him. But, you know, they're talking... I, I think you're betting two to one. You get you get a very heavy thunderstorm, but it, it is changing my idea. I'm not worried. I'm not worried at Goodwoods. I don't think you need to come stand side unless it's uh, unless it's soft. Yep. Okay. On to the three thirty-five. The feature of day two at Goodwood is the Sussex State Group One over a mile. A belter uh, usually is. To be fair, um, three three-year-olds at the top of the market that have battled already this season. Um, Rosalian, Henry Longfellow, notable speech, all ran in the St. James's Palace at Royal Ascot. Rosalian came out on top there. He also won the Irish Guineas before that. And it was notable speech who came out on top when Rosalian and he met in the 2000 Guineas. Notable speech, not great at Royal Ascot. Went off six to four. Pretty much no reason, no explanation for that poor form shown. Uh, really interesting. Henry Longfellow's in there as well. And they are they are tending to keep the faith in him. Um Probably Rosalian again, is it not, Esty? No, no. Go Tell on. you why. Um, I could see him getting in a bit of trouble here with Levy. I really could. I think I think he could be in all sorts of bother if he's not careful. Um, and it's interesting, Ballydoyle haven't put a pacemaker in the Oodle do, but met that up on Saturday, didn't they? Um, I just get the feeling with Henry. You know, he blatantly wasn't ready at the current. He's probably ready at Asker. But don't forget, Rosalian Rosalian Asker was absolutely tuned perfect because he'd had had two runs at that point. Um, So Rosalian's had three runs this year. Henry Longfellow's had two. And uh, notable speeches at about about 106. But um, it wouldn't... I didn't think there was that much between them at Asker. He did do well to win Rosalian, don't get me wrong, but... Should there be even money four to one, four to one? No, wouldn't be completely surprised if notable speech bounced back. But I, I just think they've got this. It's like they're, they're just turning the heat up a little bit every time on Henry Longfellow, and I think he'll he'll win his big one. Yeah, I couldn't make a case for the older horses, by the way. Kind of impossible. Yeah, well, Factor Cheval uh, ran well in this race last year. That was that was on soft ground. Um, he was one where in the Queen Anne where the two French runners went it alone over the far side on their own. That was dis- disgraceful, really, to be honest, in terms of their chances of <clears throat> in that race. It was ridiculous. Um, but he did win a a, a decent made made am race before that. So if getting anywhere near back to that form. He, he would be he would be a factor in here, factor Cheval. Um, Sonny Liston's, you know, 
handicap handicapper, handicap. a, a former a former handicapper won't get in handicaps now what with a chance of 114 let's have it right but yeah easy outside it the question in this race is sd pace and lack thereof there's only six runners um notables a a a a stalk and pounce type horse rosalian absolutely wants needs to show his pay, you know um turn a foot merchant Will it be Henry Longfellow going forward? I don't think it'll be Mal June going forward. I, I, wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't. I read that, you know, Aiden's not put any... I could see I could see Ryan just controlling the pace. And it as, yeah, as could I. As could I. But I also think that that might play into Rosalian. I don't think Rosalian wants a battle. I think he wants a one, one and a half furlong uh, burst and away you go. It's, You're going to tell us he barely stays a mile, aren't you, despite him being a drill. I remember you saying this at Aston. <laughs> I was co- I was concerned that he might not stay a mile well enough to 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 go on and win at Ascot, and as has happened many times this season, SD, and I don't mind admitting it, I was proven wrong. Um, this is obviously an easier mile here. The the one that worries me actually is Notable Speech because he was crap at Ascot, but he was obviously pretty excellent at, um, at, in the Guinness. So what what's he going to do? We don't know. Just so he... With Notable Speech, and I know hindsight's a wonderful thing, but. He was the one in the Guinness who'd had the Dubai prep. He'd had a run around Kempton. He was. We'd had a shit winter. He was absolutely tuned to the minute. Um, and maybe it's just that the horses have now improved a little bit more. I don't. I don't know. I'd be. I'd much rather be backing. I think Notable Speech is probably the right price. I think Rosalian is under, and I think Henry Longfellow's over. To be honest. No, I don't disagree with anything what you said. I'm just, I'm just worried that, I'm, that yeah, that I'm not really sure what the likes of notable speech are going to do. Right, okay. Uh, is that it for day two, there, Resty? Yeah, I have to say, when I was doing the form for for the later on races, I just got a bit bored, to be honest. I'm going for a curry on yeah, Wednesday. We'll so, uh, I mean, the Alice Keppel's usually a good race, but uh, usually about the winner of the Alice Keppel. But uh, good luck to all. Philly's handicaps and Philly's condition races aren't usually my thing, that is for sure. Right, OK, um, we might be back on Tuesday night, live in person, shoulder to shoulder, SD and I previewing day three. So hold on to your Robert hats. From a beer garden. Are you going to have a drink, sir? Having a yep. drink tomorrow? Yep. yep. Five pints? So. Uh, no, no, it'll be, it'll you be less than You have five pints, I'll buy them all for you. <laughs> Just to see you in a terrible five pints of alcoholic beer. Hey, SD is in um, a terrible state. If you've I've never got, met I've... him, he's, he's in he's in terrible state. Good to, by the way, good to see um somebody came up to me at you toxic uh, liking the channel. Do do come and see us at, at Goodwood this week. He'll be he'll be surrounded somewhere, but I'll be in the betting jungle at Goodwood. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I can I can show I can I can show my head now and again. Um so yeah, if I am in demand. I will come and meet you at Goodwood. Oh, yes. And on Wednesday, the value is in the Lennox enclosure. Oh, we hear this every year. Because Tim, bigger than the machine, Brown, is coming down and staying at his sister-in-law's. Make sure you bet with Tim, bigger than the machine, Brown. Uh, Tim had an interesting night at Wolverhampton. Was it last Thursday, SD, taking some large bets off some locals? Was it Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Better not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is a character in the ring is, is Tim bigger than the machine brand? The clue's in the title. Right, okay, great. Right, I'll see you later. Thank you for tuning in. Good evening.